Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true dad. Welcome back to Empire Total War. Well, last time, we were taught a lesson by Sweden, which is, if too much of your economy is dependent on trade, you'd better make sure you're defending your home territory's ports. Because right now, Antwerp is being occupied by some bloody Swedes who we can't actually kick out because I've got no land army nearby, and as a result of that, yes, my trading commies are not goods. Goods are not making it to the Ottomans. Goods are not making it to Maratha. Goods are not making it to basically anybody, to be honest. So, yes, problems, it must be said. Still, I would say the best way to start off today would be an act of natural justice, which is if Sweden caused my economy to collapse, then they're going to be the ones to fix it, because my army is right here, next to Stockholm, and uh, Stockholm is, uh, oh, it is uh, very wealthy. Wealthy enough, in fact, that it might just be able to fill the deficit, so, uh, okay, lads, let's flip and go. Okay, priority targets are the five units of line infantry that are almost at full strength. Then there are a handful who are much weaker, the cannons are also pretty bloody damaged, so yeah, my cavalry can just get on top of them, assassinate them, no trouble. Their cavalry will be functionally useless. Plus, I've got a good general present, they don't, so my morale should be much better. And also, I've still got my grenade lad, so okay, he's going to be crucial at dealing with the line infantry. Okay, as we've only got five main units of infantry to overcome, we're going to use the overload strategy. So, over on this flank, we've got some good units ready to storm the walls. Uh, over here, we got some good units coming onto these walls. Cannons at the front door, obviously. And my cavalry is spread out to deal with. Uh, however it is, uh, they're going to choose uh, to deploy the cannons. Though, probably, it's going to be nearby to the castle, ready to take out all these bastards. So... Uh, all right, lads, uh, what have you got for me? And pretty much as I was expecting, yes. So, all right, you guys begin uh, firing on uh, the fortifications. Uh, you guys get right over here, take out this lot. Now, by any chance, is there another group? Yes, indeed. They're a bit better defended than we've seen in the past, in fact. Yeah, they've got a lot guarding the rear for some reason. Okay, everybody opens fire. Step one, and deal with uh, the cannons. This will cost me some cavalry, but what can you bloody do, eh? Because, yeah, we need to get rid of these guys. And uh, they've already fired, so they're not going to be able to reload to canister shot in time to intercept my cavalry. So these guys are just going to be run over immediately. More cavalry over on this side are doing the same thing. So, yeah, these guys were the damaged ones anyway. So in come the cavalry, you guys have just been run over, love it. No reason not to just, uh, yeah, murder them, make sure they don't come back, because uh, on this occasion, no reinforcements, we don't need to worry about that nonsense. And uh, my cannons are getting nice and accurate these days, I love it. How are you guys doing, by the way? Steady! Honestly, I'm impressed, well done. Right, same deal on the far side, I'm pretty sure I saw... Yeah, one cannon inside, because they've got moving cannons, bloody fancy. So, okay, don't worry about them for the time being. Just uh, make sure we've seen off these guys, and now I believe you are, yes, nice and dead. Pull them back, don't let those guys get shot for no reason by the guys up on the wall. And here we go, exterior cannon number two gets seen off, but I'm pretty sure you guys did just take, uh, yes, a big canister shot or something, because several of you do appear to be dead. Right, shattered, they're not coming back. Don't worry about them. Pull back whenever you are ready. Lovely. Meanwhile, yes, at this point, we should be almost ready to. In fact, we're already done. Good. Breach number one. Begin making a breach number two. They're abandoning the walls over here. Honestly, no reason, therefore, not to start bringing up some troops. Because uh, once they abandon this side of the wall, basically, these guys on the left are free to just start advancing pretty much unopposed. We've got something interesting going on uh, here, by the way, which is the cannons that are being, uh, yes, drawn by horses. Uh, they appear to be attempting to fire them at these troops. Though they don't seem to be paying attention to the fact that um, there isn't an armory between 
me and them. So as a result of that, they are just slowly hitting their own troops. And so I'm curious. Could I use this to get them to shoot their own troops and indeed their own walls? Because these walls have taken damage and uh, they are taking damage. Okay, yes, this was perhaps one of the most interesting things about uh, AI in Empire, which is uh, sometimes when it came to artillery targets, the AI was not great. Oh gosh darn it, they've changed their target onto these walls over here. And these walls have already exploded, so uh, yes indeed. Bare minimum, this fort over here is uh, somewhat damaged. Okay, just in theory, if I told my cannons uh, to target this unit right here, they might, if they hit the stairs, be able to bring down this wall. I'm not sure. No, it's just out of range. They're refusing to fire. But if I don't fire right here... Yeah, because of accuracy, the shots, if they go over, might still hit the wall. You can't rule it out anyway. Okay, troops are moving into a surround position. We've got movement, though. They've decided to send some of their cavalry outside which is interesting honestly guys if they want to do that let them just reposition shoot them and then murder them as they just trickle out to you so there we go just anytime you guys are ready open fire these guys are going to oh bloody hell look at that and then just uh yes kneel down in a moment and let the second rank okay cavalry has arrived but seriously they lost like uh yeah 50 percent of their entire strength before the fight even began at this point just uh yeah surround and murder they did not get a good charge in these guys are gonna be annihilated oh blimey i think we just um okay so my straight cannon fire did not take out this wall but it did blow up their command headquarters. But honestly, they did most of the work. Oh, and better and better news at the rear. I believe the general's unit is now coming out to assist the cavalry who were just defeated. Which is really good news because there's only five of them. And my unit's still looking pretty good. So guys, open up fire. Some of you guys are nice and dead right there. There's the general. He's got a fancy wig. And he looks pretty bloody dead to me. So, okay, that's their captain defeated. In which case, everybody on every side appears to be, yes, in good shape. These guys are now cowering in the center. Deploy all units onto every flipping wall, every flipping breach. We're now just going to storm the place because uh, the artillery in the center can be devastating potentially so we want to make sure that we get in as fast as possible when the opportunity presents itself now where are the swiss there's the swiss right there you guys are going in first cannons please cease fire at this point no more firing in that direction you guys just get in ready to reinforce you guys move in over here don't expose yourself to the artillery too much stay on the inside as far as you can there should be another unit of swiss in here right yes here we go there's the swiss so you guys move into this position or we now start laying down the fire on this side, yeah, this wall's unopposed. Uh, we'll just move in, lay down some overwatch fire on anyone over here. They've already abandoned this area. So, all right. In which case, deploy some line infantry right into there. We should be able to start taking the breaches momentarily. But, yes, yeah, so we've now got ourselves at fire at will at Swiss infantry. And these guys are just going to be absolute beasts when it comes to taking apart these bastards. Especially as, oh, they're going up against Firelock. Oh, that's just not fair. All right, major movement on the left. The Swedish are not happy about this unit trying to move into town. Honestly, this guy will probably be slaughtered, but I don't care. He's providing good cover for the Swiss to just fire into anything they can hit. And these guys are moving up onto the wall. Grenades are round at this side for the time being. So, guys, just move in and do what you can. If you draw some attention, good, the grenades can take care of it. 
On the walls on this side, yeah. The Scots are going to slaughter this line infantry. You guys should be doing a competent job over here as well. Good, 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 good. This is all looking very promising. All right, here come the main lads here. I'm sending the grenades up. So, grenades, please don't fire at well. Fire where I tell you to fire. So right about over there, if you could get a good shot in, it can be a bit awkward. Though, honestly, if I could just... If I could squeeze you guys into this corner, right about that would be... Oh, that'd be amazing. Get the grenade lads into this corner. All right, just squeeze them right in. Scott, you guys get down here and reinforce. Protect the grenades. And here we go. The men in kilts are coming in. And nobody is going to be enjoying that, all right? They are the most fearsome warriors in the whole world. Here come the Scots. I've got them in just the right spot here. This is... Oh, this is perfect. Begin Operation Putting Down Grenades. So these guys are now just going to stand in this corner and toss bombs at the Swedes. And there are just so... So many units over here. Oh, this is... This is the best thing. All right, just, just keep going. Keep tossing more over in this direction. This is the perfect place for grenades. This is hilarious. So, at this point, guys, have you got a shot? Honestly, just hit these guys. That's fine. There is now a giant pile of Swedish people right here. So, they're just going to prepare their grenades. No, no, use the grenades. Use the grenades, please. There we go. Just make sure you use a grenade. Here comes grenade round number two. Their entire army is just clustering right here. And now they're being exploded. I love it. I absolutely flipping love it. This is absolutely amazing. They're sending more and more and more in. It's ridiculous. Just get over here. Keep tossing grenades. They'll just keep doing it all day long. Now, my own troops aren't 100% keen on this. They're a bit shaken because they are also being hit by all these grenades. Now, the Scots are coming in and they're doing good work too. Honestly, this is... Oh, this is beautiful. I don't even care if they take some damage at the end of this. This is going so spectacularly. Right, Swiss, time for you guys to go in and support. This is, this is beautiful right here. I love it. Right, you guys are getting a little bit far forward though. Please get yourself into a nice safe corner. What's happening on this side, by the way? Oh, this side is fine. Okay, as this side is apparently just not a problem. You guys just start moving in. Let's just take out this nonsense. You guys should be uh, firing anytime you're bloody ready. Actually, please crack on with all of that. Some of you guys can just go into melee mode and yeah, get down over here too. We don't want these guys just being fired upon randomly. So there we go. There's some fire from above. You guys are not going to be happy. How are the grenade lads doing? Honestly, they're doing, they're doing fine. Just keep tossing grenades. Just keep blowing up the Swedes. This is... Oh, this is wonderful and perfect. And I love it so much. Oh, bloody hell. The artillery just did one a hell of a massive hit to the poor old Scots there. This is... Uh, this is not so good, uh, to be honest. Guys, honestly, Scots just... Scots can charge. Everybody else just get behind them uh, over here. You guys just start shooting uh, right over there. You guys doing... Uh, a competent job. You guys uh, get over here. Assist as best you can. That's going to be absolutely uh, A-OK -okay too. But yeah, the Scots are now just uh, dealing with uh, the final bit of cavalry. You guys need to run, by the way. Because uh, I need these guys uh, to die before they become uh, a problem. So guys, turn your attention to here. Fire by rank on these bastards. And on the right, we've now pushed to the centre. So honestly, at this point, yeah, just finish off this lot over here. You guys should be doing a very competent job. Fire at will at a target of your choosing. Mainly these guys, because seriously, just... Somebody please fire. There we go. Finally, we've got fire on the Swedes, though. Okay, maybe just go in and charge them. Because these guys, I think, have got a tiny handful of extra hit points to deal with all of this. You guys get over to here and just start laying down fire on this nonsense. That's all absolutely fine. You guys take out the cavalry. Lovely. You guys are going to annihilate 
this artillery before it can fire anymore. And at this point, we've pretty much got them locked down. I love it. Here we go, guys. Sorry you guys were left alone in the corner, but don't you worry. We've got... Wait, the, the enemy general just died? I definitely killed their general, like, so long ago. There was a man in a wig. We shot him. But okay, apparently that wasn't the general or something. So, okay, you guys are... Get over here, finish off the last of this. Caffrey is trying to hold me off the town center. No major trouble there, to be honest. These guys are now collapsing in the face of uh, fire from behind. Coming in from the Scots, would you believe? Okay, I'm seeing shattered across the board. I think we flip in. Got this. Who's actually left? Nobody. Okay. Artillery made that a little bit more dicey. When they've got artillery with canister shots on the interior, that can make life tough. But... I'm mainly just curious how many kills the grenades got there. The highest kill count in the entire army, 228 kills to only 18 losses. Grenades are the best. And with that, Sweden belongs to me. So, these guys are now paying me, yes, 3,000 tax. Less than we saw before because, of course, the main building that gathers the tax is a bit on fire. Still, it is enough to avoid a deficit. So they're not going to be happy about it, but they kind of have to pay taxes anyway. So okay, Sweden belongs to us. And this is a, a huge victory for the simple reason that now, where is Sweden going to rebuild their army? Because Estonia and Livonia, that's a small settlement. Finland is very, very small indeed. So really, it has to be St. Petersburg or Moscow. And in both cases, that is on the European mainland, surrounded by Russian territory. In short, they've now got much less opportunity to come and attack me. Their army has spent the last few decades sitting in Stockholm, looking at their neighbour, thinking, that's nearby, we should go and take that. But now, it's a lot further away. Either they need to launch a full naval invasion, or they need to march all the bloody way round, and I'll see them coming from 10 million miles away. Ah, not yet though, because to be precise, my port is now being ransacked by their ship. So okay, we need to uh, get those guys uh, out of here. Also, are any of you, yeah, on fire? I can't remember whether I burnt any of you down. No, doesn't look like it, and I picked up another university or college or whatever, so that means now I can research four things at once. Okay, love it. Absolutely love it. So, Uppsala, what do we want to do with you? Well, step one, we did have an agent nearby. What buddy are you good at? So, industrial technologies. All right. So you, get inside. Research your jewel. Oh, it's one of their agents in. Oh, bloody hell. Okay. So, for some reason, a lot of gentlemen are just hanging out inside this college. Uh, no, don't, don't duel them. Just, just go and hang out in the college. Okay, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. Okay, so, there might possibly be some form of academic murder going on at some point in the near future. I don't know. Okay, I don't care about that. I just want you to get on with, yeah, industrial stuff. Like getting us a steam pump so I can upgrade my mines. Because mines is tax income and tax income can't be taken away just by virtue of one lone boat sneaking past me. Also, that was not the right... You. I want you to be doing this. You're supposed to be doing military tax. There we go. That's better. This, by the way, was one of the ways the game kind of balanced itself, which is uh, if you go on a mad expanding spree, everybody hates you and you find yourself on more war on more fronts. However, you have more opportunities uh, to research faster so you can get ahead in the tech race, giving you a better economy, better military, all the rest of it. In a perfect world, I wouldn't have minded going and taking Finland uh, and then just using that as a buffer state, maybe giving that to, say, Britain, or, indeed, my best friends, the Westphalians. Though, yeah. Given my economy is in awful, awful shape until we've taken care of these bastards, and it's going to take some time to do, the better option would be suing for peace. Now, I know the Swedish aren't going to want that because they want Stockholm back. However, I've just destroyed their army. 
if the war continues, they are fully aware that my vastly superior troops can now just walk into Finland and keep going. I could eliminate Sweden right now if I wanted to, but I don't want to because I don't want to be stuck with all this territory right next to Russia. Okay, at this point, I want to set up a lasting peace in Europe because, as we discussed last time, the Maratha Confederacy is beginning to steamroll. And my victory conditions say I've got to own, at the bare minimum, a bit of southern India. I think it's time we go on an adventure in order to get some tea, some cotton, some spices, the exciting trade goods we can get from setting up shop in India. But for that to happen, I need to be pretty confident that we're in a good situation right here in Europe. By which I mean a stable situation. So that's my goal over the next two or three turns. Come up with a peace and a status quo that I'm pretty confident I can defend with a relatively modest force here in Europe. Because, okay, let's talk about precisely how the AI thinks in this game, which is relatively advanced in the Total War franchise. You see, in Warhammer say, the AI pretty much purely functions on opinion, as you'll be well aware if you've ever played, yes, Warhammer 2, and come across in the giant merge campaign, the Wood Elves, who immediately declare war on you. Why? Because they hate you. Do they have a reason to do so? No, absolutely not. Do they want anything from you? No. Will they ever come and attack you? Probably not. Are they going to declare war on you anyway? Yes, because they're dicks. In this game, it's a bit more complicated. The AI needs two things to declare war. It needs a motive and it needs an opportunity. Motive is pretty simple. It's a function of attitude. And that's very often a function of how expansionist have you been in the local neighborhoods. But that's not all it is because Poland and Lithuania has been hating me for years. But they only declared war when I moved in to Berlin. Why? Because there's now an opportunity for them to do something about it. They see I'm their neighbour. In theory, they might be able to march in and take Berlin at some point. Therefore, they declared war. Had I not moved into Berlin, there's a good chance they wouldn't have done. Because they don't have a port, therefore they're not thinking about any form of naval engagement or naval invasion. They needed a land border, so when they had it, that's when they declared war. I'm trying to create a situation where the AI does not have an opportunity to attack me. And this is what the gigantic shield of Westphalia is actually for. I am trying to create a scenario when nobody borders me aside from a minor faction. Now, the minor faction too is starting to cool off on me because I'm expanding nearby to them. However, minor factions tend to be a lot more passive. He might attack me at some point in future, eventually, but it's much less likely than a great power. And speaking of which... Dresden. You guys have just been chilling out here for, like, no reason for so long. Would you guys like a hand? Because I could just take that and then give it to you. Here we go. Deploy the army out of Berlin. Move it straight in and we can take this and... I am amazed that you're saying the balance of power is like that. That is... That is definitely not true. Okay, the auto-resolve is still only 168 men for victory. I'll take it. No problem there whatsoever. So, okay, city is on fire. Sorry about that. Not much we can do. So, we'll just abandon that. Move straight to Berlin, which also hates me. And now we just hand that straight over to the Westphalians. And here we go. My border is now Westphalia, 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 and Westphalia all this way as a buffer state between me and the Prussians in Bavaria. Which is a very good starting point to start having a think about, yes, making peace. So step one, Sweden. They might not like me, in fact they absolutely hate me, but they are fully aware I have got a stronger army than them and I could just crush them. There's a good chance they will accept peace even if they don't really want it. Which I want because that would get me my port back immediately this turn. And I need my trade network restored. Okay, let's just offer them peace. See what the starting gambit is. And uh, they want Norway. Okay, we're not giving them Norway. But as a starting point, they have not said I'm going to whip you. So this here is a pretty good victory. All right, how about I toss in, yes, some philosophy. I will give you a philosophical principle about lands. 
And, uh, okay, no, no, no. Keep putting in money. All right, I'm willing to pay because I'm going to get more than enough money back right here. How about, not a thousand. Let's try uh, 500 uh, as a starting point here. In fact, to be honest, I need, how much do I need to repair the port? I don't know. We'll figure that out later. I will give you 500 times 5 piece technology. Okay, there's a deal to be done here. I know there is. Nope, I simply don't have enough money to bribe them. Unfortunately, you can't offer more than what you've got. So, for the time being, the war continues. I may need to, yes, go and take something and then offer it back to them to secure the peace. Alright, for the time being, we just need to hold on. Alright, my cavalry will be arriving to kick these guys out of my port next turn if they don't leave by choice in the meantime. I am, yeah, making sure they can't sack this port. They can put it under siege, which would also be a disaster. But I've got enough ships here to hopefully deal with them. Ah, you see, now this is good. Britain has started trading ships in the Med immediately. So they're attacking Spain. They'll deal with pirates. They just won and took one of the ships. Well done, Britain. Okay, British presence in the Mediterranean. Now that... That I want to see. And Austrians beating up Prussians. Well, enemy's enemy is my friend. You love to see it. Although, oh. Okay, the Prussians just destroyed them. That's fascinating. Though, to be honest, a weakened Austria is more likely to make peace. So, this could be good news. Oh, blimey. Britain's getting really fighty here. They are actually... Blockading, attacking, and burning the principal port of Spain. And if Spain is... Okay, Spain's captured the ship. But it doesn't matter. That port is out of commission for the time being. Blimey. Oh, and hilariously, I believe every single agent inside the Swedish college is now just leaving. They don't like it anymore. Now Sweden doesn't own it. So, um... Okay, they're just going by land to... Finland? Moscow, I don't know where they're going, but they're naffing off. Okay, and we've just managed to stave off bankruptcy. Although I'm going to be honest, there are reasons for that. Like, say, I may have had to slightly put up taxes and take away certain tax exemptions that many people had previously. So there might potentially be a little bit of long-term economic damage to all that nonsense. Still, we have avoided bankruptcy, which is very good. And Berlin's gonna start cheering up soon. We've got ourselves... No, don't tell me about that. It's fine. Though, oh bloody hell. Buildings are being damaged. Okay. Yes, there are consequences to allowing riots and strikes to occur, which is buildings can end up being destroyed. Strikes are not so bad, but if you let strikes happen two turns in a row, yeah, stuff starts getting broken. Still, bare minimum, not much raiding going on today. So while my trade is currently limited, what's getting through is at least not being too interrupted. So, okay, we are holding on for dear life, but we've got to actually not let this happen again. In particular, the settlements that just were kind of set on fire Another round of rebellions there, and there's trouble. So, okay. We need to sort this out, like, right now. Step one, get the cock out of my port. Here we go. Cavalry has arrived. They can kick these guys out of port. And the moment they're out on the sea, they get pushed into my zone of control. Meaning I can force them into a fight immediately. And, uh, yes indeed. I've built up enough forces. This is now very in my favour. Yep, auto resolve says I get the six rate, couple of ships get damaged, I lose a handful of little guys, but honestly, I'll take it. Add that to the fleet right there, we needed to lose some ships anyway, so I'm happy to just, you know, sacrifice some boats just to get that done. So, okay, step one, most importantly, repair the bloody port. Next turn, the trade is restored. And repair this fleet, that is now, yes... High priority, uh, in addition, by the way, is that, by any chance, another six rate is ready to join this fleet. Do it. Send them straight down. We had another six rate just waiting to go. That fleet can now defend the local area without too much trouble. Though, ideally, I need you guys to naff off out of this port, please. 
Now, there is going to be a rebellion and an uprising in Sweden. We can't avoid that. It's pretty much inevitable. But yeah, it's just too much of a problem. So, uh, we take the money. Berlin, I can't afford to not tax you right now. I'm so sorry about this. Until that port is repaired next turn, and I don't know whether that's deemed to be repaired the moment the turn ends, and thus I do get the trade income next turn, or if I have to wait for another turn beyond that for that to occur. I do not know. Oh, but I tell you what, I've just figured out how we're gonna make some money right away. So, my trade fleet, which is also very good at murder, has just arrived in the Indies. So, okay. One, we could just float around on Spain's line, and that is going to get me 1,500 gold right there. But, 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 I would rather follow this line back to, oh, guys, I think we've just located Spain right there. So, yes, 2,200 goes down to 500. I am happy to just straight away sit here and raid that money. And next turn, that's actually a lot of galleons. That's... Gonna be honest, that's actually a slightly scary number of galleons. How many galleons do I have? I've got three galleons, two flutes, and a giant pile of... I wasn't expecting them to have four galleons, to be honest. I think we could still have that if it came to it, but... I can't deny that he's a, a bit more than I was expecting to say. Oh, we've also got it confirmed, by the way, that Sweden has decided St. Petersburg is its new capital. Though, they're not trading. Because that's a fishing port and that's a shipyard. They don't have a trade port anymore. They're literally not trading. Oh, I love it. Okay, taxes need to be lowered. Or there are going to be rebellions, potentially. Now, we know there's a possibility of rebellion in Sweden and Berlin. Can't do anything about that. Doesn't really matter. So, I mean, apparently, I could actually get... Hang on. You guys would be chill if I just have uh, those taxes at medium. Okay. Okay. Not having another uprising in Berlin would be good. Won't deny that'd be really nice. Don't worry about Sweden. We can't stop that one way or the other. Okay, just stay on middle taxes across the board in Europe. In America, we've got... Oh, we've got some severe problems in America. Okay, I am overtaxing America right now. Who needs to be exempted from taxes or you're going to freak out? Because I'm going to be honest, some of you, we can't afford to do that. Oh yeah, this place is, this place has gone bananas. And part of the problem is, your main building just got, oh bloody hell. Guys, why did you burn down the building that adds repression? Okay, fine. You burn down the building that adds repression because you don't want to be repressed. I mean, fair enough, I suppose. But, oh, this is going to be a problem. If you guys burnt something down, there is a severe risk of... Uh, actual rebellion here. Meaning I've kind of got to commit the money to fixing this and... I mean, right now we're not going to go bankrupt. But if a large fleet just decides to, you know, show up and blockade even more trade in the meantime, could become a problem, actually. Okay. Cuba is fine paying taxes. There might be a rebellion imminently on this island. Because... There's not much here to defend it. The only way to stop that would be to... Okay, lower taxes to... Wow. Okay, you guys just don't care, do you? You just really hate me. You do not care about taxes in the slightest. Okay, we might lose Santo Domingo overnight. If that happens, it happens. We're just gonna have to deal. Okay, this is now making me worried that the right move might actually be for my main fleet to send it down to the Indies. Just for the sake of, uh, yeah, making sure the Spanish presence there is dealt with uh, without significant losses. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. There's nothing more important for it to be doing right now. Deploy the entire fleet 
in that direction. Oh, hang on. There might be a solution here. The current Minister for America is a bastard who unfortunately, yes, causes unhappiness with the lower class. If I replaced him with somebody much better, here we go. You, buddy. Plus one to happiness, lower class. Anything else you are... Okay, there's happiness nobility. Happiness middle class too. Okay. The guy who's currently running the army, and he is pretty good at it, I'll admit, would also be potentially good enough to avoid problems in South America. So, okay. You're going down there. So, you're four stars straight away. Plus one repression. And, on top of that, plus one to happiness lower class. Has that fixed the problem? No, it's still not enough. We're so close. Well, the boat's by the army in Cuba. If we need to go take it back next turn, we need to go take it back next turn. The more important thing, arguably, is making sure, yes, Flanders doesn't rebel. That would be much more of an issue. Right, fire the useless guy. He does nothing but annoy people. So we're just going to replace him with... Oh, now that's much better. In fact, you, buddy, could be a really good justice minister. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that skill at justice. That's it. That's enough. This new extremely harsh justice minister has pushed Santo Domingo to 0-0. Zero, zero. Okay. We're just okay. We're not going to lose anything. The trade will be back momentarily. Then you can all have tax exemption. Like... Every single one of you. Alright, Britain continues their Mediterranean adventure, and I flippin' love it. They're just causing so much trouble for the Spanish. It's beautiful. And the great Swedish nobility hike continues. Right now they are, yes, right in the very north of Sweden. Still don't know where they're going, mind. Oh, and Westphalia are getting fighty. They are definitely walking into Bavarian territory and causing some trouble for Munich. I love it. And on top of that, here we go. Socket bayonet. Because, well, right now my troops are, yes, able to fight efficiently and still shoot without changing modes or being stuck. The previous bayonet did lead to a slight reduction in reloading skill. The new socket bayonet gets rid of it. So now my troops are firing faster and still good at stabbing. New plantations are coming in too. We should be swimming in huge amounts of money, and uh, okay, right now, the trade is uh, not coming in, the trade's not coming in, because uh, it can't come in, but, 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 next turn, okay, we're back, we're fine, the economy's going to recover, okay, that means, uh, who over here would like to be tax exempt, because some of you can now be tax exempt, Okay, step one, now the economy is secure, get all troops healing up, because they could do with it. Step two, actually be a bit careful. I don't know what's going on over here, but Spain's been eating territory in North America. That could represent a problem in the long run. They've definitely got an army somewhere on the mainland. But as we know, it's way out the way, that means these territories down here are going to be easy pickings. And there's good mines in South America. Get the army in the boat. We're going to go investigate. Ooh, and development down in North Africa too. Spain has now taken another port off the Barbary States. So, okay. The threat they represent to Mediterranean shipping is going down. But Spain and Britain now have another border. I'm going to be honest. I suspect Britain does not have a good land army here. So, Spain might be about to extend in this direction, straight to here, and then maybe just keep going. They're getting pretty nearby to the Ottomans. All right, with the economy secure, back to Operation Peace. I need to make some peace with a whole bunch of people around me. All right, Austria, I would not mind you being stronger because I need you to be a counterbalance to the bloody Prussians down south. All right, I need you to fight back. Just let's have some peace, buddy. No need to fight. All right, job done there. Peace with Austria. Now, Austria now has basically no reason to attack me. 
like we were talking about earlier, they don't have an opportunity to do so. And the same is kind of true for Prussia, who are currently desperately trying to recover, but they are surrounded by everybody who hates them. Okay, no peace with them, but no immediate threat either. Ah yes, yeah, so and while I'm waiting for my main fighting force to arrive, there we go. 3,629 spices are now being shipped back to Europe. The East Indies are flipping back though, oh blimey. Have I just made spices? Okay, not the cheapest good in the world, but not too far off either. I have flooded Europe with ivory and spice. In fact, you know what is good news? Poland, Lithuania is on the march down south. They're now bordering Prussia. And Prussia hates them just like they hate everybody. Okay, Poland and Prussia might be pulled into a bit of a fight there. That works for me. That might pull this army away. Alright, and here we go. Britain's finally bothering to send its trade fleet around. So that was Madagascar. Right there. So they're doing a whole bunch of ivory trading. Sorry guys, I've kind of, uh, yeah, flooded Europe with pianos already. There might not be too many people who need any more. Oh, and the great migration of academics continues, sadly, out of my line of sight. I think they're just going to Finland, which is, um, let's just say bad news for them. They might be disappointed when they get there. Oh, and speaking of Maratha, they're on the way. I am pretty sure Persia is not going to be around too much longer. Oh, and sad, sad news. New France has gone the same way as old France. In fact, in more ways than one, because the British have eaten it. Hopefully, they'll take better care of it than, yeah, the last France they occupied. Because they did lose that one immediately to the Spanish. But Britain are definitely getting a bit more fighty at the moment. Which they're gonna need to be because I know there's a Spanish army somewhere around here and British territory is now vulnerable in North America. Okay, mystery in the Indies though. Where precisely have the Spanish forces gone? Because they would appear to be not here anymore. Alright guys, I did not see them move. They were out of my, uh, yeah, vision range. The Spanish Galleon fleet has naffed off somewhere, but I don't know where to. I mean, they could be coming back to the Caribbean. They know trouble is coming in over here. All right, they've seen me on the approach. And speaking of which, yes, indeed. My troops can't attack this turn. There was no port, so yeah, unloading them burnt my turn. But new territory joining me momentarily. Is this a good region? This is a terrible region, but it does export coffee, which is actually probably one of the most valuable goods in the world right now. No, it's still pretty terrible, but uh, yes, we've kind of flooded the market with everything, actually. Okay, is it time to cut ties with Persia? Because their one port is destroyed. Maratha is on its way with cannons and camels and all the rest of it. Okay, there's no real point trading with Persia anymore. Right now, we're just wasting trade slots. Guys, I'm sorry. I was hoping you might be useful, but uh, I feel like not so much anymore. Hilariously, the only power we can actually trade with now is the Barbary States. I mean, if they're willing to do it, why not? Nope, they've threatened to stab me for the crime of suggesting mutually beneficial trade. But what if I toss in a tiny bit of military knowledge? Nope, they still hate it. Okay, fine, what have you. Bare minimum, the fact I'm not trading with a, uh, yes, territory that's been blockaded means more of my goods is making it where it can actually make it. And in Northern Europe, guys, 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 I know this used to be your port, but it's not anymore. So please get out so that I can shoot you a bit. And seriously, 50-50. It's a damage brig versus a, a full strength experience six rate. Guys, are you 100% sure you want to do this? Because it kind of feels like you're in a rowboat and I'm in a giant mega doom ship. Sadly, sunk, we could not capture her. Still, that gets me even more trade coming in because now for the first time ever, I believe... 
we've got furs, who we can start selling to Britain, everybody. Amazingly, yeah, Westphalia is now my second best trade partner. I have made them into a mighty great power. It's beautiful. Meanwhile, oh my goodness. Look at the adorable Swedish rebellion. That is, oh, it's so cute. Let's go murder it. Oh yeah, we've got a fun day today. It's target practice day. All right, basic militia, basic cavalry, just coming up and getting shot to ribbons. That's just a free experience. I love it. Here we go, my units who know how to fire by rank, and unfortunately, you guys don't. So this is a, a huge, huge amount of fire. You've already broken. You have broken already too. This is, oh, this is lovely. And funny story, Sweden's decided, having just seen that, that they don't want to rebel anymore. Lovely. Though don't worry, guys. Don't worry. We've got money now. So that means uh, you can have uh, all your stuff back. No trouble. No trouble at all. We were probably the ones that burnt it down when we arrived. Uh, so sorry about that. Okay, meanwhile, elsewhere in the world, uh, Britain just loaded up a very big uh, army. Now that could mean any number of things. Britain does eventually want to go and do some business in India because, you know, historically they did. So at some point they're going to want to go and do that. And if they do, given I was just talking about the same thing, that could be nice. Or they could be shipping an army down towards, uh, yeah, North Africa to go and reinforce their brand new holdings uh, over there. I simply don't know. Or they want to fight Spain in the Caribbean. Keep an eye on that boat. It could be doing any number of things. And Sweden's not ready to give up yet. They're just training more and more bloody ships. Okay, that's fine. You, buddy, just retreat. We don't need to lose you if we can avoid it. I've got a bigger fleet just around the corner. And, uh, oh my goodness, are the academics coming back? I don't know. They've decided they just want to hang out right there for some reason. And seriously, the Westphalian Navy has started to get big. These guys have seriously got plans. I don't know what they're going to do. Because being a minor nation, they don't have any victory conditions. They've not got things they want to be doing. So, oh, this is just fascinating. Oh, and what's that? 15 grand. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The economy's fine all of a sudden. And it's gonna be better once we've moved into more Spanish territory. Oh, yeah. This is unguarded. We're just walking into this. This is... This is lovely. Actually, I say this is lovely. I'm gonna be honest. This is nothing but farming, which doesn't help me much. And, uh, yeah, coffee, which I can't ship anywhere. So... Alright, there's got to be a port somewhere. It's called Puerto. That means port, right? Yes, there we go. So right now this coffee's not going anywhere, but... But, 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 but... Can't help but notice, the Spanish never bothered, yes, investing in this gem pit. Which hasn't got much going on, but it's better than nothing. Right, exempt them from taxes and let's get a port going on as soon as possible. Speaking of which, yes indeed. Right now we've got ourselves an opportunity to invest. In fact, yeah, this could be coffee or sugar. Now, sugar is definitely a little bit overproduced at the moment. Focus on the coffee. Get all of the coffee moving in the right direction. That was actually tobacco, but that's good too. And now it's time to force the peace. All right, I've got a tiny light galley right here. And all it's going to do is get the troops over to Finland, though, to be honest. Now I know there's a massive fleet over there. Maybe we'll do this with, a, like, a proper fleet. I do have a proper fleet just around the corner that is momentarily going to be pulling itself together. There's more boats coming out over there. You can join up with these guys. That is... How many six rates have we got there? That's a trio of six rates. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And we've got a brand new, decent quality, yeah, shipyard around here. In fact, that's a dockyard. I can't develop that yet. I don't have the technology, but oh, well, hello, sexy. I mean, to be honest, I'm okay with fifth rates for the time being. That's actually going to take only uh, two turns to complete. But okay, the big sexy ships are now available to me. Though, to be clear, Sweden, I don't want to do this. I will happily pay you, like, generously to just naff off and leave me alone. Oh, we've got it done. 
2,500 gold a turn for five turns and a bit of tech. And on top of that, we get a trade deal. So, okay. Wait, how are we trading? I don't know how we're trading, but... No, seriously, how are we trading? We definitely don't have... Wait, we do have a land border. Just using multiple straits. So, okay, we're now trading via an incredibly convoluted land route with Sweden. I feel like the traders would be well within their rights to say, seriously, why can't we just bloody trade by sea? But no, you can't. They don't have an appropriate port. And even with that deal in play, it does not matter. We are still swimming in money. Piece number two, secured. No need to bother invading Finland. And now, I mean, to be honest, I want to go and keep an eye on them. Then again, I don't need to keep an eye on them. At this point, my traders are keeping an eye on them because, uh, yeah, the trade can go through Finland. So I've now got visibility of the straits along here because my traders are, oh, that's by accident, genius. Now I've got a huge early warning system in case a massive fleet starts appearing in the water. And uh, I've got pretty good visibility of any armies uh, that start moving up through Finland uh, towards my territory. That's actually really useful. The fact this is a land route is way more useful to me than anything else. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay, now Poland's got no reason to naff off and stop waging war with me. But to be honest, I mean, we'll give it a go. Another two grand a turn gets me peace with Poland. Now that won't necessarily last. But again, they're trading with me and they're trading with me by land. So that is actually going to make some of that money straight back again. In fact, I'm making... More money by trade with Poland than I'm paying them for peace. This is... Oh, this is beautiful. Is that true for Sweden as well? Hang about. Sweden is not quite, but almost. Right now, I am paying four grand a turn just to maintain peace. And out of it, I'm probably barely losing anything. Now, a tiny amount, sure. Because, yeah, there's less trade goods available to ship elsewhere. But, oh, this is... This is beautiful. I'm just buying peace in Europe. Now, I am still at war with Prussia, and honestly, I'll stay that way, because uh, they're dangerous, they're expanding, I might want to maybe jump on that a little bit. But okay, with that in play, and with no idea where the main Spanish fleet is, uh, it's time to come home. Bring the main fleet home. It's time to put it all together. With peace pretty much established in Europe, that means, uh, yeah, it's time. I've already got a spy right here in Ceylon. My original missionary is still in play. They've never spawned a rake or anything, so no one can assassinate him. Meaning, I know what's going on right here. And it is a good quality barracks, nice cannon foundry, all the rest of it. So, okay. It's time. It's time for us to come in with our best army. And to be honest, I could probably afford to build a, a brand new, even better army. Exciting, sexy military academy, you say? I mean, I shan't say no to that, as I've got all the money. I say having just spent all the money, but that's fine. All right, my troops are in very, very good shape. For the time being, Sweden is paying its bloody taxes. And I'm now pretty confident the economy is powerful enough that I can just bribe anyone I want to to just shut up and make peace with me. And at some point... We're going to want to do that with Spain. Only reason not to do it immediately is Spain is allied with Maratha. So when I attack them, yeah. Even if I were to buy peace with Russia or Spain, it would just end up causing trouble. Now, those guys are also, they're making alliances with the Italian states. Which is going to cause issues for my trade dotted around uh, the Mediterranean, it must be said, but it's a price worth paying because, uh, yeah, for the first time, we're starting to see on the European map the Maratha appearing. They're bloody here. So, I would say that's more than enough for now, but next time the preparations begin, we are about to put together the strongest fleet and the strongest army that the Dutch have ever known. Because now, there is one key thing that we must do. 
secure at the bare minimum South India. Because without it, we simply cannot win. So, join me next time as we discuss and maybe even launch the invasion of India. Hopefully, you are looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been Joe. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Empire Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This, this guy's enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear! And then oh, in come the chariot!